Okay. Check it out, guys. Right here, I have a brand new micro SD card. 256 gigs on a single little chip the size of your fingernail. I'm gonna use this SD card to record today's video. Yeah. Excellent! The Hydro X series is Corsair's new line of custom cooling parts built for the world's most powerful and stunning systems. They've gone all out with CPU and graphics card water blocks, pump reservoir combos, fittings, tubing, radiators, and coolant, providing you with everything you need to build a spectacular custom cooling loop that lowers system temperatures and improves performance, complete with vivid RGB lighting. Click the sponsor link in the video description to learn more. I know, what a tricky intro. I actually got two of them and one of them's already open. So I am actually using this SD card to record today's video, it's just I'm using the other one that I already opened. These were a couple things I bought on Black Friday. I'm not doing a Black Friday haul video this year. Behind me, I have a bunch of uh, setup that we did for our 12 hour charity live stream, which uh, was done successfully within the past week or so, at least as of when you guys watch this video. I did a video last year on setting that whole thing up not going to do a video dedicated on that this year. What I'm doing this video on is a bunch of random extra stuff. So this is going to be the first ever Paul's Hardware Extra video. I have extra things to handle in this video that don't necessarily warrant their own individual video, but I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. We'll bounce between a bunch of random things and we'll see if you guys like it. If you do, let me know in the comment section or maybe by hitting the thumbs up button, but watch the whole video before you do any of that. There's Nori looking pretty for the camera, but uh, this is our 12-hour uh, charity live stream setup, and I tweeted a picture of this briefly, and I'm not going to go over all the details to how this is configured, but I thought I'd at least point stuff out to you really quickly. We're going to be cleaning up today, stuff like, that's the towel I used to shave my beard, which I still haven't shaken out. I'm going to do that soon. But there's Arctic Panther. This was my workstation. I had a separate uh, GH4 camera set up up there, which was doing capture for me. I was just broadcasting on my headset right there with the audio. And that's probably if there is something I want to change up and do a little bit next year, it's the audio solution. I also had a mic over here and then Kyle had a mic right up here. And those were piped into the soundboard down there for this system over here, and that was the streaming system that was streaming on Awesome Hardware where people could watch a multi-stream setup where you could watch my monitor or Kyle's monitor or Joe's monitor. Kyle was gaming on this system down here, which is a test bed, which had a 3900X and an RTX 2080 Ti. And then this is Joe's gaming system, which had a 3600X and an RTX 2070. Finally, the main streaming system there has this monitor, which is uh, ultra wide and it can actually swing on an arm to face towards us over there or to face this direction. So this was Joe's kind of uh, control station here where he could use the stream deck and this keyboard to control that system for awesome hardware game on this computer. And then we had a camera up here for awesome ha hardware pointing down to get me and Kyle. And then I had a wide shot with a webcam here pointing down that we switched to every so often, not too often. And again, if there's a downside to this setup, it's that the individual streams that I was doing from my station over here and that Kyle was doing from this station down here could hear me well on mine and Kyle well on his, but we didn't have a way that all of the audio was piping into our individual streams on YouTube. So that could be improved in the future. Of course, on Twitch, you could watch all three streams at the same time, but the issue there was you didn't have audio uh, from all of the streams. So you didn't have gaming audio going through the whole time. And we did have a way that we could have done that, but basically we just ran out of time. But uh, we've taken some notes. We've got some ideas for next year. Uh, we did end up raising over $21,000 while we were live. There have been some additional donations that have come in. And I think right now, before we go ahead and start tearing down this set, which is one of the main things we need to do today, I need to do some more charity donations. So here's the charity stream donation page, and it's at $26,000 now, 26,782? Because PC Part Picker dropped five grand on us at some point recently, uh, yesterday, apparently. I'm filming this on Monday. They, on Sunday, December 8th, added an extra $5,000 to our charity pool. So we're at $26,782 now. Thank you, PC Part Picker. Uh, that was very, very kind of you. Again, again all of this is going to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles via Extra Life. But I can add even more to this, so I think I can help us crack 27,000. So to explain, at the beginning of December, we had a fan meetup here for local people in Southern California. Kyle and I were there. 
Uh, Jay also came and joined us, and I collected some money from the people who joined us. I traded them useful things for that money, and I told them that all that money was going to be donated towards the charity pool for our Extra Life 12-hour live stream. And then I totally neglected to do that while we were actually live. So really quickly, I'm going to donate the money from the fan meetup. It was, about, it was like 365 ish dollars or so, I'm gonna round that up to 400. Boom, all right, so uh, we've now cracked $27,000, and I don't wanna be too optimistic here or anything, but I kinda feel like 30 grand is is within range at this point. Again, that, that's mainly because of the PC part picker uh, with the five grand that they dropped pretty late in the game. So $27,182 is where we're at right now. And guys, if you're watching this video, uh, I will post the link to this charity donation page in the video description in case you guys uh, wanna add a little bit to this pile. Uh, it's available through the end of 2019. Now, the other idea I had towards the end of the year was uh, Corsair was like, hey, we want you to build a system using our Hydro X water cool components. I was like, what am I gonna do with that system afterwards? And I decided to do a charity fundraiser auction. I did a silent auction via email. I had a bunch of bids that came in, so thanks to all of you guys who bid. But the deal with the silent auction is that that would be split three ways. A third of it was going to be donated to Eden Reforestation Projects. So I took 1,600 and I did that donation at the beginning of the live stream on Saturday. 1,600 of it was also added to the charity live stream fund for the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. And then the final one, one third of that is supposed to go to Donors Choose, which helps support classrooms across the United States who are in need. Uh, they have supported 560,707 teachers so far. And you can sort projects in need by uh, the various subjects, uh, age group, uh, what they're in requesting for, whether it's art supplies, books, basic classroom stuff, computers, tablets. So what I get to do now is just kind of go on a spending spree. Uh, I think all I'm gonna do is sort these by most urgent according to Donors Choose, and then I'm just gonna start funding these one at a time. It might take me a few minutes because we're looking at donations uh, generally between 50 and $100 at a time. So give me just a few minutes and uh, let's let's help some kids out. $81 to Mrs. Stewart in Savannah, Georgia for Chromebooks. $81 to Mrs. Cleary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for a media cart and floor seats. $47 to Mrs. Godfrey in Taylorsville, Utah getting headphones for the students. $45 to Mrs. Velez in Las Vegas, Nevada for a charging station, Osmo, chargers, laminator, and carpet sit markers. $28 to Mrs. Sparks in Washington, Indiana for Brain Pop. I don't know what that is. It sounds fascinating though. $89 to Mr. J in Chicago, IL, uh, getting the presentation boards for history fair projects. $112 to Ms. Patterson in Altamonte, Florida for xylophones. Ooh. $139 to Mrs. Tassin in Michigan. Uh, more xylophones. Xylophones are very popular at this time of year. $166 to Mr. Brown in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, a unique new reading lounge for the students. Flexible seating and a, lights. Lights is very important for reading. My mother always told me that. $33 to Mrs. Caroline's Speech Room in Staten Island, New York. Uh, doing a cooking setup for the kids. That's awesome. Gotta, gotta teach those life skills. $101 to Ms. Tiffany Stewart in Globe, Arizona for flexible seating for her students. Here's $130 going to Ms. Mullen in Duarte, California, making a buddy bench to provide a designated safe and comfortable location for students to gather, share empathy, and demonstrate positive social skills on the playground. $57 to Dr. Cadison in Long Island City, New York, who is doing a Black Lives Matter Day of Action West African Dance Workshop. $55 to Ms. Ross from Kissimmee, Florida. Book storage setup for a classroom library. $42 for Mr. Huerta in Calexico, California. Getting a 3D printer set up with a DIY kit. That's nice. $40 to Ms. Garcia in Gilroy, California for a TV. Gotta, gotta get that interactive learning going on. Hey, you can watch YouTube videos on TV. That's, that's nice. $98 to Mrs. Robinson in St. Cloud, Florida for a rug, a comfortable rug. Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. I hope that rug really ties the room together. $102 for Ms. Lucero in Cleveland, Ohio for a new table for differentiated small group instruction. $51 to Mr. Case in New York, New York. He is getting Neo Rock stools that encourage movement while sitting, core engagement, and better posture. $93 to Ms. Geller in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, more technology this time, Amazon Fire tablets. $66 bucks for Mrs. Furkey in Chicopee, Massachusetts, uh, giving the students the ability to clean and sanitize their dishes used in the cooking classroom. That's useful. A dishwasher. I could use one of those myself. And $95 to Ms. Coleman in Augusta, Georgia for Project Thank Our Janitors. 
Uh, janitors are the very important part of school, keeping a clean environment. Uh, school needs vacuum cleaners. Uh, I hope this helps get them, and I think that helps us break the $1,600 mark that we were aiming for. So there it is, guys. All of these projects have now been fully funded on Donors Choose, and if you guys want to go and uh, fund some of your own projects, or not your own projects, but if you want to fund projects that they have available over there. I highly recommend it. It's a great charity, and uh, the total amount was about $1,650, which finalizes the trifecta of donations to Extra Life, to Donors Choose, and to Eden Reforestation projects. And if you guys are interested, I'll post links to all of these down in the video's description. I kind of feel like Joe's on a ride along today. Like, he's just been following me around while I do stuff, because I haven't been giving him any work to do. But that's okay, I have more work to do. Next step is posting a video. I do that pretty regularly, right? Yeah. You wanna help Joe? I've been listening all day. Okay. Like, no, I don't want you to take the camera. Oh. <laughs> this is a monthly builds video. It's probably already up if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, part of doing all this is making the description, which, you know, I get a big old block of text and then I copy and paste it. I just posted the video. I also posted it over on Reddit. Have you guys joined the Paul's Hardware subreddit? You should. I post videos there. It's basically the same as my YouTube channel. You should always use emojis when tweeting about your videos, if nothing else. Default to fire. Woo! And now we wait for the retweets and likes to roll in. Oh, look at that. Who will the top eight be? Let's find out. We have our fastest likes and retweets for this one. Now I just gotta go ahead and award them all their badges. Wait, no, these are medals? Yes. First, second, and third place medals. It's 2020 and everybody should get a f***ing participation trophy. I'm just saying. No participation trophies, Joe. You only win if you're in the top eight. All the other tweets and likes don't, don't matter. <laughs> don't <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love them all, but you know, <laughs> speed is important. It's important to be first. <laughs> Go ahead and tweet that. Awesome. Thanks to everyone who has responded, retweeted, whatever else for my video I just posted. And in case you guys are wondering, uh, uh, Riptide here, still functional, but we're still running on just one pump right here. Everything's cycled through that one. So coming soon, not today, but coming soon, uh, a follow-up refresh video on this. I need to replace this pump and probably do a flush on the system because the water's starting to look a little on the cloudy side. All right, guys, the donations have been made. The video has been posted. I think we can finally start getting this area cleaned up and uh, back to normal, at least as normal as it is. It... Why are their arms sprouting out of my head right now? Damn it, Joe. Okay, the donations have been made. The video is posted. Uh, we can now start focusing on getting this whole area cleaned up and back to normal, resetting from the 12 hour charity live stream. And after a decent amount of work, the set has pretty much been reset the way I usually do it, except for a few things over there, but ignore those. Now I can move on to getting some stuff done, which is I need to pack up three systems. I got this one in the TU-150, that one was sent by Mike. And one thing that I didn't mention during the live stream is Mike actually sent a very heartfelt note along with this, dedicating the build to his father who passed away last year, who, who had specifically done a lot of charitable work for uh, orphans and orphanages and therefore uh, the cause of the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles resonated with him, and that's why he decided to build the system and send it over. So thanks, Mike, once again. I have two other builds right here, though, that I need to figure out, and uh, one, of course, is the Hydro X system, so gonna need to do an extensive amount of work with that. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to it today or not, but then, of course, we got the $900 build over here, because this one here and this one have giveaways that are gonna end in a couple of days as of the filming of this video. By the time this video goes up, they'll probably have already been given away to the winners. And I do have kind of a standard procedure that I go through when I ship a system, which involves getting it all packed up, getting a separate box set aside as well with all of the retail boxes and accessories and everything so that whoever ends up with the system has everything they might need if they ever want to do work on it in the future. I am very glad I now have workspace to handle this job in and I'm going to show you why in just a second. But before that, I mentioned that I did a Black Friday haul and although I'm not doing a video dedicated to it, I thought I'd at least show you guys some of the stuff that arrived. Got a second one of these 256 gig SDXC cards, of course. 
I got two of these two terabyte standard SATA SSDs and actually already unboxed one and has been in use. This was the third games drive, two terabyte external SSD storage for games that we used during the live stream. I got my WD purple drive, the four terabyte one. There's also a 10 terabyte WD red drive that I bought simply because it was a great deal. That one's supposed to arrive today, I think. The home surveillance system is still over there making slightly more noise than I'd prefer. That's a temporary home for it and I'm gonna be doing more work on that very soon. And then I got a new wireless uh, USB adapter. And this is simply because I already have a wireless USB adapter that I plug into builds when I set them up if they don't have Wi-Fi already. Um, but the one I have is a little old and it can be finicky from time to time. So uh, this one was on sale, Black Friday deal. So I got it too. And I would do all the setup stuff out here, except we've been planning for the holidays. Look, stocking stuffers. And last night we put up the Christmas tree. Actually, we put up the Christmas tree two nights ago. We decorated it last night. Isn't it pretty? Isn't it beautiful? Look, we've even got a Corsair RGB Christmas ornament. Mm -hmm. RGB, RGB. The holidays can definitely be hectic, which is why I'm trying to get everything tidied up here in the living room. And this is the area of shame over on this side of the room where we have various things like Hana's Tesla Model S. Piles of boxes, and a lot of these boxes are the boxes for those systems in there. So I'm gonna be packing a lot of this stuff and shipping it out. And then we have some of Hana's basic entry-level baby stuff over here that she's outgrown that we're trying to find a home for. So that should be gone within a day or two as well. I pulled Mike's build out of the box just to give you guys a closer look at it and also so I could give it a little once over. I think I'm actually gonna need to pull the GPU out of here as well as that little SO DIM.2 riser. And Mike mentioned sort of a weird thing, a bit of a QC issue actually, I think from ASUS, which is just that the front facing part of the SO DIM.2, which has an ASUS ROG logo on it and some LEDs behind it that shine through, was upside down on this one. So it's probably just installed upside down at the factory. It is the type of piece that could be flipped. So it would need to be like heat gunned off and replaced. But for now, Mike has done a temporary masking job with some electrical tape. And I think I'm gonna pull the GPU and that riser out and ship them separately or see if I can fit them elsewise in the box. Other than that though, really nice, powerful little system. It has a 3900X in it as well as an RTX 2070 Super, the little mini one from Zotac. And somehow he managed to fit five Corsair LL fans in here. One, two, three, and then the front, he did a push pull on that. So that's four and five. Very well done, Mike. And thank you once again for your support with this system for giveaway. Here's the other giveaway system from the 12 hour charity live stream. And for this one, I've got all the retail boxes. This is a system I put together myself. So what I usually do is like, here's the power supply retail box. So that has like the power supply cable in it and extra modular cables. Retail box for the CPU. This is an actual retail sample, not a not for resale one. So uh, just have the box for this since the CPU and the cooler are both installed in the case. And part of the reason I stuck with the stock AMD Ryzen cooler is it's really good for shipping. It's gonna stay in place, it's not gonna move around. A large air cooler, I'd be worried about. I wouldn't wanna ship it with a large air cooler. Liquid coolers are fine, but uh, that was gonna be a little overkill for this build since I was originally parting it out to be something of a budget setup. We have the B450 Tomahawk Max, the peace of mind update to the very popular B450 Tomahawk, guaranteeing that it's gonna ship with compatibility for Ryzen 3000 series processors. In there, I've got the retail box for the SSD. Important stuff like the little brackets that you take off when you install the CPU cooler. Some CPU coolers require these little brackets to be in there. So if the winner of this build decides to upgrade their stock heatsink fan eventually, they'll definitely want to have those around. Also got the memory packaging uh, accessories for the case are right here as well. Other motherboard accessories, manual and everything are down there in the bottom. All of these boxes were in the retail box for the case, but I got to put the case the whole system in there now. So I'm gonna find a separate box to ship all of these other retail boxes in, as well as this one. The retail box for the graphics card, the 5700 XT Gaming X from MSI. And that's, I'm gonna pull out because if you can avoid it at all, you should never ship a system with a graphics card installed. It's gonna bounce around and jostle and can damage the card or the motherboard in shipment. So I'm gonna pull that out, put it in the retail box again. That's gonna ship separately along with the retail boxes and then the core system will ship by itself in the case retail box. Oh yeah, before I take anything apart or do any disassembly, of course, I'm reinstalling Windows. If you guys watched the video where I put this whole thing together, I did boot it up in order to test the memory kit that's installed in there, which is a 3600 speed kit of memory, which is actually working at 3600 speed, which is nice. But the Windows install I had was really old and outdated, and I want to do a fresh one anyway, so handling that real quick. 
So if you guys are watching this and wondering why I am showing you all of this, uh, part of it is because it takes time. So I'm either gonna make a video on this today or I'm not gonna make a video. Second reason is I don't do quite as many giveaways as I used to do. And part of that is because sometimes there can be negative response to them. And I understand that criticism to a certain extent. And I think by showing you guys this stuff, it can show you that, yeah, I am taking this full circle, trying to do a thorough job on the systems. I wanna make sure that the winners get fully functional systems that they can plug in and start using. But also I hope this might be helpful for any of you guys out there who might be building systems that they need to ship somewhere. Anytime you set up a system and you need to send it through the post, uh, UPS, FedEx, or whatever else, there are precautions you should absolutely take because systems can get tossed around, they're delicate, they can get damaged en route, and by taking some of the steps that you've seen me take today, you can possibly mitigate some of that damage and make sure that the system you're shipping arrives in one piece. All right guys, so I skipped ahead. I hope you don't mind. Uh, just passed over a lot of the packing and cleaning stuff that you don't really need to see because now I can just show you the results. Sorry, our gardeners decided to show up right now, but it's okay. Here's the main area, and as you can see, it's mostly cleaned off. Also, my 10 terabyte hard drive arrived. I'm excited about that. Also, this arrived. I'm trying to get rid of stuff, and stuff keeps arriving. Ta-da, it's the $50 3000G processor. Thanks, AMD. Uh, I'll do the, a budget build with this. Of course, the main thing I've been working on in fits and starts this whole video and this whole week has been these three systems right here. So these are all packed up. I haven't taped them all up yet because uh, the winners still need to be picked for this one here and this one here, but we've got the system box with all the retail boxes and accessories, and, and yes, that's a diaper box from Kirkland Supreme. And then here's Mike's build, which I put in a larger box since that's Shipping International, just to give it a little bit more cushioning and hopefully make it survive the voyage. So things are good out here, but uh, one of the main reasons I was doing all this work is to clear out the living room. Let's check out how that looks. So here's the living room, and obviously we got a bunch of baby stuff out. Not much to be done about that, but the tree is there and decorated, and we're very happy with that. And then this area here, although the sunlight is streaming in, which is making uh, the light balance a little bit difficult in here, as you can see, this used to be piled with boxes. A lot of it was computer boxes, and now that's mostly been cleared out. I think the only stuff that's still computer stuff is this case, which is also gonna be leaving soon. And then this bag has some extra stuff in it as well. This is still a little bit of a dumping ground because we don't have a very large house and we don't have a lot of space for extra stuff. So we need to find a better place for the vacuums. We still have a few boxes and everything, but if you look at it from this angle, oh, look at that. Stockings hung by the chimney with care. Lots more space there. And yes, these uh, wood pieces over here are still gonna be the next phase of the home upgrade project. And that is also why a lot of this work is being done. If you guys are following a couple of the home improvement project videos that I've done recently, uh, they have poured the concrete slab on the side yard. They're coming on Monday to install the patio cover out there, so that's gonna give me some outdoor workspace. So that should be done before the end of the year. But we have Christmas, New Year's, and then CES coming up. And then right after that, they're gonna start working on the inside. So just to give you guys an idea, we're gonna be tearing up all the floors in here. They're going to be redoing the walls because we have a weird texture thing going on. Complete redo of the kitchen. And I'll be documenting that as much as I can because while they're doing that work, I'm not gonna be able to get a whole lot of regular video projects done. For now though, we're in much better shape going into the holidays and having family over and stuff. And I think that's gonna be where this video needs to end. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a little extra video, lots of in-between stuff that's been going on this week. You know, when it comes down to it and I've got a lot of stuff to get done, I either gotta do a video like this or I gotta not do a video at all. So I hope you guys appreciated it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. I'll be back with more regular content very soon. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time.